at what we week three, week four of, of lockdown where we are. So mm. into the new podcast. We've, and uh, yeah, we've got a really special guest joining us uh, today. Uh, Jason Fong. Jason, how are you doing? And let, let me bring him in. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, how are you going? Hey, good. How, hey, are, you? Jason, how are you? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Surviving. How's your uh, how's lockdown going for you? To be honest, and it's really, really weird to say it, but my routine hasn't changed all that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the same yes. for, for those of us that sort of work from home uh, a fair bit anyway. It, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, not much changes. So, uh, yeah, what, where, where, I guess, start off with a question. Where should you be at the moment if, uh, if all was going to plan? <laughs> uh, probably somewhere in Spain at the moment. Yeah, I've had a few jobs that unfortunately have been pulled because of the of the of the rona unfortunately so yeah it's it's a real shame yeah cool so i guess um, we'll um just, just quick andrew um just introduce if we could get jason just chat your videos mm. stopped for the moment so i've pulled you okay. out <laughs> if you can restart your video and yeah then, and, uh, you and, you and, jason, and then jason uh, yeah. can introduce himself and go yeah. on and and explain yeah. a little bit about himself and and how he came to be that'd be good well um yeah, uh, to be honest, I'm a photographer, but uh, never really planned on being. It's been a bit of an unexpected journey, if uh, I'm to be honest. Uh, planned originally to be a car designer, so I went to uni and did all that uh, product design back in Sydney with the intention to move to either Melbourne or or to Coventry to, to do masters in automotive, but kind of got sidetracked when I realised that Holden and Ford weren't going too well back in the day, and I <laughs> I think good, I think I made the right choice. Uh, I, think, yeah, I, think, I think you definitely made the right choice there, with given that yeah. everything's going going on at the moment with yeah, Oldham pulling it. out completely and Ford not yeah. doing manufacturing it's, here anymore. So it's really really sad, but uh, yeah, it's just the way it kind of went. Um, I did a lot of stuff um, kind of with car cobs back in Australia before I decided to move over to Europe and uh, to give it a go. <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, so what 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 prompted that that move over to Europe? Um, well, I did exchange and uh, I met my lovely partner um, <laughs> who's British. And so I went back to Australia, finished uni after exchange. Yeah. And then I said, you know what? Actually, I've got no responsibilities at the moment. If I'm going to try it, I better do it now. I've got nothing going. So uh, if I fail, I can always move home, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's just yeah, one of cool. those things. Yeah, awesome. Um, so... Yeah, coming over to London, like, did you have a job or, like, over the UK, did you have a job to come to or, to, like, you said that you studied yeah. engineering. Like, um, yeah, what what led you to where you are now? Um, yeah, it was just really just biting the bullet, to be honest. I was There was no plan, really. It was kind of like I'd like to go over there and try to make photography a career, but I wasn't sure if it would work. But, like, I was just I was willing to give it a go. Um, so yeah. I sent out a few feel it, um, kind of emails out to a few websites, and one of them that picked it up was um, Car Throttle. And uh, I did some test shoots with them and then ended up doing some work with them and then did a load of motorsport um, events. Yeah. kind of just off my own back and for some small websites um and yeah just one thing led to another and yeah i've been very very lucky to work with some pretty big magazines and, and publishers and some manufacturers now so yeah i've been been really really lucky yeah awesome that's great andrew welcome hey, back he's back, back. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce, that, uh, thank you thank you <laughs> special guest <laughs> all Return. right we we're good, yeah. yeah. I think I caught uh, caught most of that. So, um, yeah, yeah, also, so, awesome. yeah, we were yeah. just chatting about Jason and how how he got into London and got into yep. photography and studied yeah. engineering and everything, which is cool. Yeah. So, Jason, I mean, we, you know, obviously both thought, you know, being Aussies over here in the UK. What what was the first time that you went to an event in the UK? And because I, I can definitely remember the time this happened to me when your mind is blown. You're you're used to how things are in Australia, and then and then you just see the depth and the scope and the quality over here. And and you know, when was that for you? What what was that that moment like? Uh, I've been to a few events, of course. Like in the UK, I went to a small mm -hmm. one in Brands Hatch, which was a historic one. Did Silverstone and Classic and stuff like that. But it was mm -hmm. probably the Goodwood Revival that kind of changed everything. It was just so crazy. And uh, it was just full on crazy cars, people dressed up. It was just on a different level altogether. Um, that yeah. and Le Mans Classic as well, because I, I did Le Mans Classic after Le Mans. Very cool. Yeah. And Le Mans Classic was really cool. Just the, the depth of cars and the passion from people all across the continent. It was 
really, yeah. really cool. Just yeah. different. And I'm not going to lie, I think they go faster as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, but that was my gut instinct because I've done a few yeah. historic events in Sydney. But yeah. the speeds that people were doing in historic cars was just, yeah. yeah. Was, was, that your first, was that your first Group C experience? Uh, actually, first Group C experience was in Sydney. Uh, the Sydney Retro Speed Fest, I think it was like 2012, mm -hmm. 2013, something like that. I uh, went to that, and there was a couple of Group C cars going around, and they were, they were going quick. Yeah. Yeah. Because I guess for those that, that, that don't know, there's there's a bit of a, and um, I guess we need to, you know, be careful, but but you always hear stories that, that the historic uh, cars that run in Europe and at events like Goodwood and Silverstone um, are not as original or historic as, you know, put it put it this way, an, an E-type that, that runs in Europe now is a hell of a lot faster than an E-type ever was back in period. Oh, yeah. um, uh, which yeah, which just I, happens with technology development and tyres yeah. and tires, suspension yeah, yeah. and fluid. Yeah. And, yeah. Which no, it's all drivers. It's all drivers. <laughs> <laughs> it's all drivers, yeah. But I personally think that's great to see you know like yeah. i i don't see anything wrong with that i i want to see those those old cars that they're, they're definitely in the spirit of what that what they were and to see them being driven just so hard and going so quickly i think it's it's brilliant you know it's uh, it's yeah, great yeah. so well, that's that's mm. part of the uh i guess tinkering with your car and working on it and improving it like most mm. people that i know anyway and i'm sure you guys are both the same one well, i know that <laughs> andrew's definitely the same and then jason with your mx5 is is probably a shining yeah. light of that as well but just yeah. like every little bit to make it go that little bit faster. You faster. Just <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And I guess, Jason, you might as well touch as well, because obviously photography is, is arguably, am I right in saying sort of where you spend the most of your time, but, but obviously you've got a whole nother skill set, which is a lot, uh, a lot rarer than the most people. You've obviously a, a fine artist too, and, and getting involved in that side of it as well, which is, which is pretty cool. Yeah. It's uh because of the background in design, I kind of try to keep that alive because, I know, to be honest, I never really actually liked photography from when I was young. It was yeah. all like a kind of accident. It was just a tool to be able to, to let me to draw things from, you know, a, a reference. Yeah. Um, yep. But it was actually after I bought my first car um, that I decided to do some photography. But even now, I try to, especially with isolation, um, try mm -hmm. to keep up to date with uh, the art side of things. Um, Mm. Uh, it's been a while since I've done, I've done a proper painting in oils, but I've been doing a lot of sketching and a lot of kind of um, watercolors that are a lot quicker to, to do. Yeah. And so, but I think yeah. within the next couple of weeks, I'll definitely get to work on an oil painting. Just, <laughs> you can see a couple sitting in the background. I've literally got yeah. piles of kind of like half finished ones that I just haven't done. Yeah. Well, that, and and I know I was just going to say I saw that that picture of yourself with um obviously the, the the sad passing of Sterling Moss on the weekend just gone and you posted that picture of yourself, um showing Sterling uh, an oil painting a large yeah, a large yeah. portrait oil painting of Sterling which is yeah, like, yeah. that was fantastic what uh, was that like what was that moment that like? was that was really really cool actually um mm -hmm. I'd I'd started that painting uh, that year uh, because I done the Mille Miglia, I think the year before. And I said, I, w I, would, I only wanted to do a Mille Miglia painting after I'd kind of done the route and seen what it could have been like and got the real feeling. Um, and then I started doing the painting and then I found out that it was a celebration that year. I'm not sure what it was for, for, for Sterling Moss. And so it was at the Festival of Speed. So I kind of rushed to finish this painting and I actually finished it at the hotel room the night before. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I think there's some pictures that my my um, my, my parents took while I was in the hotel yep. room, just finishing off these little last bits um, yep. before taking it into Goodwood. But um, yep. that weekend, I wasn't actually shooting at Goodwood. I was working for Toyota, doing a painting for their concept oh, yeah. car and their stand. Yeah. So I was very cool. Yeah, uh, up these two paintings at the same time, and then I brought in yep. the Sterling Moss one. Managed to wow. to get get it in front of him and yeah the first thing he said when i plonked it in front of him was wow and i don't know what to get it was, yeah, yeah. It, took, it really took a couple of minutes to kind of look at it and kind of yeah, yeah so we've got a picture next to the car as well which is really really cool <laughs> yeah, yeah it's what a legend what a legend it's um yeah. you know it's it's a shame with a lot of these people that i certainly find sometimes i don't um research them and, and learn enough about them until after it's too late you know but but yeah, i've yeah, just yeah. found myself rereading the um, the story of uh, of jenks who, who you know dennis jenkinson the journalist yeah, yeah. come sort of co-driver and their, their mini mini victory and, and his race report of the preparation and that event is just 
you, you wouldn't believe it as something that actually happened unless yeah. you know these people existed it's just uh, incredible a place in time yeah. but, you know, like absolutely amazing. insane but like mm. i mean have you been on the minute haven't you i haven't no it's no, um oh, no no i've right. driven some of driven some of the roads yeah, but yeah. that event has has eluded me it's definitely yeah, on the yeah, list yeah. Uh, in fact this yeah. this year it was a it was a this year i was mm. going to try and get oh, down no. there, <laughs> but it's okay <laughs> oh, well, there's always another year it's fine exactly exactly <laughs> but, uh, well yeah. you've driven the roads and you know what it's like but 10 yeah. hours and a thousand yeah. miles it's was... actually insane it's like you can't even be... yeah yeah it's really, really well, because, hard to I mean, figure out. For, for perspective, in that that current course now, mm. that I mean, obviously it's a it's a sort of effectively a touring rally with mm. very loose regulations and, and speed limits, yeah. but it takes them the better part of what thirty six hours or so to. to yeah, yeah. Course it's, days, it? it's actually one of the hardest things, kind of, I've gone to to cover as a photographer. Um, yeah. I was really lucky to to meet a uh, a little company that um, they actually rent out cars for the Mille Mille. They've got a fleet of original cars that actually did it from <laughs> back in the day. And so wow. if you've got spare cash and you can't, because even if you buy a car, there's no guarantee you'll get in um, yeah. unless it's got history. So yeah, this this fleet is the only, I, I think, I believe is the only company that can rent them out. Um, but uh, wow. yeah, we, we went, I went along with the, the support crew in their car mm -hmm. and we stayed up for a really long time because, you know, you'd start at, seven o'clock in the morning if we had three or four cars we wouldn't go to sleep till four o'clock in the morning because they'd have to service them in the evenings and then wow. get going at about seven eight o'clock in the morning again if not wow. earlier so it was pretty full-on that's but, uh, uh yeah exhaustion that's, um, to the max <laughs> yeah i mean even yeah like you said it's it's a touring rally and it's not really you know full-on speed but just trying to stay awake for that long is just effort. Yeah. Well, I think it was it was one of Chris Harris's earliest earlier videos where he did a yeah. jag. That was like yeah, the time. in the yeah. C It's definitely not yeah, a yeah. like full comp rally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I think um yeah, I mean there's some events like that now. Jason, have you had anything to do with the tour auto in France at all? Have no, I've not actually. I that is something mm -hmm. that's on the list to do because that looks yeah. like a, my kind of thing. Um, I did a similar rally in Italy. It's, I suppose it's an Italian version. Um, it's called yeah. the Modena Centore. Oh, sure have you heard of it? Yes. That's yeah. really, really cool. Um, but yeah. a similar kind of recipe, I suppose, for what their, their event is. It's kind yeah. of uh, a mixture of closed um, road rallies uh, at full speed and also track racing as well so it's a bit of a mixture but everything's at full speed which is really really cool <laughs> yeah no, I, I think those um yeah what what a combination you know circuit racing and tarmac rallying in the same cars yeah, yeah, the yeah. same events with the same crews it's um, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah and you get everything from like gt40s to ford escorts it's just it's yeah. mega <laughs> really cool <laughs> yeah well, i think so that I guess... was one of your photos was like a gt40 down like a yep that was on the Monte Centore, yeah. 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 You want to bring that yeah. one up? That one's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah. We might as well. There's another one I'd like to, to talk about as well, because I, I um I, one thing I love about your photography is is the sort of the storytelling aspect. I mean, look at yeah, that's yeah, that's, um, yeah. <laughs> so, Jason, do, do you mind telling us that the story? Every every photo has a story. What what? Yeah. Was the story um, right basically, I was uh, I was taking pictures for the rally. Um, mm -hmm just kind of emotional stuff. And so I had a driver and he was also a photographer. So we kind of just went along together, yeah. uh, but he was driving at the time and we were on the road. And then I heard this GT40 behind us and I was like, this is going to be really cool. It's raining, <laughs> it's terrible weather. Yeah. You know, all the recipes for a great photo, right? <laughs> yeah. um, and then we, we, we kind of, we followed it for a while and then um, we went through this town and then I just started snapping and we stopped at traffic lights. I'd got some pictures of it, you know, in town. But then it was when we came through this alleyway and it was just really so loud. <laughs> I can't explain <laughs> how loud it was. Um, but my, I think my favorite element, okay, yeah, the, the car's really, really nice. The background's really I love yeah. this little, the lady who's over there. <laughs> 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 because she was like, what is going on? Yeah, yeah. What is happening? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the but, other, the other, Oh, sorry, go on, Jason. You were saying no, no, that's all right. That's good. I was yeah. going to say the the other photo in in the collection. You know, you've prepared for us is uh, yeah, I love yeah. that shot you've got from the Milli Milia, and there's the old gentleman sitting on the stool, um, yeah, staring yeah. at is it a Maserati, a thirty five hundred or something, as as it's yeah. driving past. I just think that is just that is just incredible. Um, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's one of the things I think 
Jason, for me personally anyway, being a little bit of a amateur photographer, <laughs> not, not anywhere near your level at all. But I think one of the things that I love about what you do that's unique, I guess, from other motorsport photography is your ability to photograph people in that mm. as well. Um, like your portrait work is is just beautiful. Oh, like, you, yeah, the expression and the, mm. the uh, again, the storytelling in that photo is great. So, yeah, little things like this at motorsport events is, is yeah, is, yeah, phenomenal. Yeah. Right. Thank you, really, mate. really yeah. tells a lot of things, really tells a lot. Yeah, I think it's it's important to get the, the people aspect of yeah. motorsport because I mean it's it's mm. it's what it's all about really. It's about people, you know, drivers, mm. the mechanics. Mm. Um, I, with this shot, we were I was this I was in the support car and we just pulled over um, and driving through this town and pulled over to to kind of wait for our cars to go past to make sure that they were okay. Um, mm -hmm. I spotted this guy in uh, as we drove past. I spotted him in, the, in this little kind of archway, sitting in his chair. And yeah. um, so I, I asked the, the team it was all right to run over and just grab some pictures and it was fine. Yeah. So I ran over and I, yeah. I kind of, because he spoke no English at all. Like zero. <laughs> <laughs> but I kind of did the hand gestures and kind of just said like, can I, you know, take a photo? <laughs> That's 50% <laughs> you know? Italian yeah. anyway, yeah. so you're fine. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and um, I was really waiting for a red car. It had to be yeah. red, and I really wanted yeah. it to be a Maserati or something like that. That was yeah. a real yeah. Emilia car. And uh, I was just really, really lucky. Um, a Maserati came through and a snapshots. I got some pictures similar with um, an mm. S300 uh, SL Gullwing, but it just didn't yeah. have the same kind of yeah. feeling. The red that pushes that kind of emotion aspect yeah. out but he was fantastic he kind of just sat there and he was like happy to kind of pose a little bit <laughs> yeah it was i find really... um i obviously haven't done anything on the scale that, that you've done the, the only similar thing is we we caught the finish of tour auto uh last year uh in deville in france and and just europe you know, a lot of these European towns and villages, they have so much texture and detail and, and just so much emotion and passion in them that that as a photographer, it just presents you with so many opportunities um, to capture, you know, it's just, you know, an event like this where there's cars sort of rolling through every 30 seconds to a minute. I, I found I, it was unlike anything I'd done just because every building had was a great backdrop and there were so many people and there was, you know, people drinking beer and coffee and, and it was just, just this amazing thing. Um, and I... Yeah, it's yeah. I think those events. Uh, there's really nothing like them when they happen in in Europe. You know, to provide yeah, those yeah. opportunities, which is Definitely. which is very yeah. Uh, if anyone's it listening, up, you know, from Australia, find the most obscure events. You know, everyone comes over for the big stuff, but find the most obscure, off the beaten track events you can, um, and and go to it. And it, yeah, 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 awesome. Yeah, so, it's yeah, definitely yeah, unique. Been, I completely agree with that because I mean, mm -hmm. even now I go to some of these events and I've been doing it for a couple of years now. I've been here for six years almost. Um, mm -hmm. But every time I'm in an event, I'm just kind of like, this is like dreamland. <laughs> 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 you know, the opportunities for photos, you can't really go wrong, I suppose, you know. Yeah. Whereas I found in Australia, um, I mean, I was shooting a lot at Eastern Creek, you know, the drifting and that kind of stuff. Yeah. You had to work really, really hard to get good pictures just because the backdrop yeah. just didn't have that kind of. Yeah. Punch, you know to, to get yeah. that emotion across it was just really really different well i guess that's yeah. one of the things like you probably have quite a few uh amateur photographers following you on instagram and and looking at the work that you do and i guess yeah is that is that a piece of advice you've had for them would be to try and capture different aspects of motorsport rather than just cars yes a hundred percent that um mm. my favorite place to shoot at in motorsport is actually pit lane um, the track stuff is really, really fun, but I can find it gets a bit repetitive. Um, you know, unless you're looking for that, you, you get that shot, you know, where there's a bit of action, there's dust, there's, you know, a crash or something like that. It can yeah. be a bit samey, samey, but pit lane and that, again, that human I interaction, that's the most important mm. thing for me um, that kind of tells the story of motorsport and, you know, wh what we're doing when we're out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I think yeah. one of my favourite photos when Andrew and I shot the Adelaide Rally last year together, again, we were shooting for the event and for competitors. Um, mm. And, you know, obviously with the competitors, I want to see their car on stage. But I think personally some of my favourite shots are the ones that Andrew yeah. got on the finish line, which just show the 
usually sheer joy. Yeah, you know, we yeah. got there in the end, we're done. Um, you know, uh, like I think that's just an aspect of motorsport that is sometimes overlooked by people starting out. So, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I find that a lot of people, yeah, when they think of motorsport photography, all they think about is kind of that standard, you know, three quarter angle. The wheels don't even necessarily need to be moving of it on a track somewhere and it could yeah. be anywhere <laughs> but um, yeah i think if you if you kind of open uh the opportunities to yourself by looking for those obscure angles i think it's it's definitely worthwhile and and i think i mean obviously we'll, we'll touch uh in a minute we've had a few questions through so we'll, we'll touch in a minute on what gear you use and what you shoot with but i certainly find that the off track the pit lane and the, and the form upgrade in the paddock type um photography that you don't need the big crazy lenses as well like if you're going to shoot you know the beautiful on track stuff you do i mean i'm not sure what you use but i'm going to guess and say it's a 400 or a 600 you know that's a pretty significant investment but but if you get capture those moments off track you, you don't need that gear like a, a kit lens is, is probably sufficient to, to get a lot of really great Definitely. shots which, which you know i think what would you agree you know on track is it is it focal length is focal length and that's kind of what you need or <laughs> it's, it's, you, know, you know what it's it's um it, it does come down to what you've got and just the option you'll have opportunities mm -hmm. based on what you have um because yeah. i only ever when i was shooting at the beginning for about two or three years i only mm -hmm. ever had up to a, a 200 with the 70 to 200 um but as a result you end up with kind of wider shots that capture the environment of the track uh, of it gives a sense of context to the, where the car is. Like I said, if you if you have a 600, you're going to be so tempted to kind of just crop right in, and all you're going to see is like a little bit of that track. You know, might might get a little bit of the curb, but it'll mostly be the car. But if you shoot wider uh, with a kit lens, for example, you, you're kind of mm. forced to kind of take in everything around you. Um, mm. When I'm in pit lane, for example, yeah, 20, the 2470 is my my lens of choice. Really, if I had only one lens to use, it would be that one. Just yeah, because, well, yeah, yeah, I like the wide angle because uh, my pictures, I kind of want to kind of take the person who's looking at the picture to that moment and see mm -hmm. it as I saw it. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas, yeah, if you have 600, no one ever sees at 600 mil. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's yeah. one of the things with newer technology too, like the amount of megapixels today's cameras shoot at, even the, the cheap crop yeah. body ones, like yeah. you can shoot so wide and crop it in. Um, yeah. yeah and still get a mm. phenomenally sharp shot and, you know, really yeah, yeah. quite clear. Uh, you Definitely. know, when, if you try and crop, you can't uncrop. You know, if you try and shoot yeah, close, yeah, you can't, yeah, you can't yeah. zoom in <laughs> afterwards. Yeah. But if you yeah, shoot yeah. wide, you might get something in it you, you didn't expect or notice. Definitely. Or mm -hmm. you know, I think I think with on-track stuff, like, yeah, like getting, yeah, you say that crash, that action, there's that, you know, the bit of rubber flying off or yeah, you know, yeah. the dirt coming off a corner you might not get or you might not see properly. Mm -hmm. And that, I guess yeah. that's true of like rally photos too. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I oh. think that, that jump photo you got of the Corolla, <laughs> oh, speaking yeah. of. The Yaris. The Yaris. <laughs> Yaris. Yeah. Yeah. Yaris. Yeah. The Yaris. So how did, how did that come about? That was a, a rally Sweden, a, a snow rally with no snow. What was what Yeah, was that? that was, that was that was a little bit weird, um, but uh, basically, <laughs> I've been I've been really lucky to be working with Toyota um, in the last couple of months, uh, quite closely with the European division, kind of um, doing press packs and and uh, pitches for their marketing team. Uh, so I yeah. went over to, to Sweden to do stuff for their new GR Yaris, which was actually the um, the zero car for you know uh, safety um, doing the lap, doing the course before the cars came along, um, and then. Uh, I stayed around after the, the course car went and uh, may as well shoot the Yaris, right? So this was actually on um, Shakedown and this was in the morning about nine, 10 o'clock. And this is the first time I've ever been on a competitive rally stage in WRC. And I thought, you know, I'll go for a walk. I have no idea what I'm doing. And it's kind of nice because, you know, it's unpredictable. And I think that's a part of the motor, motorsport photography is unpredictability of mm. everything. So I walked up this hill and I said, ah, oh, car's going to be coming soon. Kind of looks like a nice spot. Uh, I'll, I'll camp here. I actually met some Aussies there, which was really nice too. Um, <laughs> They're probably everywhere, but, aren't they? <laughs> uh, yeah, they are everywhere. <laughs> but I crouched down and I was like, oh, the light's kind of nice. There's a little bit of a crest. Might get a little jump. The first car that came over, um, absolutely, it was a Hyundai, but it flew over the crest. And I got a nice <laughs> picture of that. And when the Yaris came over, it jumped even further. 
and uh yeah managed to get this snap which was you know just really really yeah. lucky the light was just right and uh yeah, yeah. No, it's just yeah it's pretty intense but it was pretty um nice wake up call to say hey welcome to rally because i'd never <laughs> never seen anything <laughs> like that before so it's like hey, it's so narrow how can they go so fast because <laughs> the, the speed of modern wrc cars i mean everyone looks back yeah. with you know roast into glasses to the group beer and everyone sort of fantasizes but yeah, yeah. holy crap these cars are bloody <laughs> they fast are <laughs> like fast. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That the drivers in WRC or any rally drivers are, have got to be the best in the world, honestly. With complete uh, ch conditions that are changing constantly, I don't know how they can keep control of the cars and and those navigators. Yeah. Man, they are brave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could, yeah. Could never do what they do. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, but, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I certainly find like shooting gravel rally is still my favorite thing to shoot. I mean, yeah. I. Have, uh, a lot of it lately but it, just, just the adventures i mean i'm not sure you know you've probably got stories to tell of of doing this wrc but but just getting to the stage and getting to the corner is half mm. of the fun of the adventures involved with you know traveling out there and finding the spots and trekking through you know a, a farmer's field to to hop a fence <laughs> to get into the spot like it's um yeah you know it's, yeah, yeah. it's very, very yeah. different to turning up to, to goodwood and uh having yeah, a coffee yeah. and taking, pressing the shutter button. Definitely. <laughs> Ripping a yeah, pen of barbed wire or getting yeah. covered in yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, that, that's the thing, you know, after doing this event, I was like, you know what, actually WRC or just rally in general really mm. suits, I think, what I like from motorsport because yeah. the reason I kind of fell into motorsport was I enjoyed, I've, I've always loved cars. I've always loved performance cars. Mm -hmm. and I've always loved seeing them go fast and doing what they're supposed to do. But as an artist, what I really liked is that you can't replicate something that will only ever happen once. Um, whereas if you yeah. go into a studio or you do a press pack for, for a company, if mm. you give the job to another photographer and you wanted a certain style, that person could do that if they were given the time, especially in a studio yeah. environment. You could replicate lighting, no problem. But yeah. in motorsport, yeah. A jump like this will only ever happen once. A crash like that will only ever happen once. That guy's only ever going to take that corner like that probably once, you know, unless he's, yeah, crazy, yeah. Um, crazy good. But, <laughs> yeah. but you know, I, I love it. You know, what I'm, to, uh, is when they, you know, clip apexes and a little bit of grass goes up, you know, you, yeah, usually yeah. that only happens once. So it's, it's quite and nice. And I guess the challenge as a photographer, and you know, I've I've definitely had this has happened to me once, and I was kicking myself. But you also only get one shot at getting that photo. So if that happens once and you miss it, <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> you've you've yeah. missed that. You know, definitely. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I remember I, my my very early days. I was shooting a Targa High Country um, up the back of uh, in the Victorian Highlands there, and it was back when Kevin Weeks was running the um no 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 sorry it was Jason White now running the, yeah. the, the Galado there, and nice. yeah oh, I yeah. was. I was a couple of years in and I was still, you know, I was starting to run low on SD cards, sort of storage space. And I thought one more car and then I'll, and then I'll swap SD cards to another one. And of course their Galado has come up the hill. And what's happened is that the rear of the car about 10 kilometers further down the hill has caught on fire. And it was the last stage of the rally. They were six kilometers from the end and they just were like stuff up. We'll try and, and get there. So the back of this Galado is on fire. There's trailing bits of carbon fiber, flaming carbon fiber kind of dangling off the back of it. And they're driving with smoke and flames coming out the back of the car trying to get to, to the finish line, um, which was at the top of Mount Buller. And there's a, there's a YouTube video. It is on YouTube. It's, it's pretty amazing. And and yeah, I, I've, I had four or five photos left and I went click, click, click as it was coming towards me and then looked up and saw the flames and the trailing carbon fiber and I had no more storage space on my um, and, <laughs> and I just, I, I watched it. I watched it do the hairpin and drive yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And from yeah, that yeah. moment on, never made that mistake again. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you get Just buy the SD card. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. As soon as you see Galado, I was like, are you talking about the one that caught fire? Yeah. <laughs> I, remember that. I really remember that video quite really clearly. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Yeah. But it's yeah. funny that you mentioned that because um, mm -hmm. on the subject of, you know, taking pictures all the time and having that space and, you know, making sure you get the shot. Sometimes when I'm shooting for myself, um, and it happened at Le Mans Classic when I first went there, it was about two o'clock in the morning. I think sometimes if, sort of you, you do need to remember that, you need to have that experience for yourself as well. And um, I was at Mulsanne Strait, and it was the start of, I think, the, uh, was it was a Group C or Group 5 cars, but these cars came down the Mulsanne Strait all together in a big group. And I started taking photos, and then I stopped. And um, 
I just thought, I'm just going to watch this because I want to see this happen because otherwise you kind of miss it through through the lens, if you know what I mean. Um, and if you've seen uh, the film, what is it called? Uh, Walter Mitty. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The whole life of Walter Mitty. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah, the photographer in that, you know, he's, he's on the top of the mountain and he sees mm -hmm. that wild, you know, cat or whatever mm -hmm. in the mountain mm -hmm. and he, he goes, you know what, I'm not even going to take the shot. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, yeah. <laughs> but it's, I, I, that, yeah. that actually um, resonated with me because I was like, you know what, mm -hmm. it is important to have those experiences because sometimes, mm -hmm. yeah, you just kind of forget. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I kind of do that every now and then. And another thing I've started doing is I've attached a GoPro to the camera. So at least yeah. I can rewatch it in a way. Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah, it is I an have. interesting point that, that a lot of, you know, I would argue most most automotive and motorsport photographers get first get involved because of a love for the sports and a love for the cars. Mm -hmm. And 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 really, I mean, I, I started and I think Luke is the same because having a press pass and a camera is the best way to get as close to the action as you physically can. Well, and, easier and then, than a flag marshal for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. More and, fun than a flag marshal. For sure. But, but yeah. you're right. You do get swept up yeah. in, in trying to get the photo and kind of looking down the lens. And, and obviously, you know, that there's a very big divide that when you're working as a professional you're very much there to do a job and that's your job mm. and you need to do it so that's that's fine but you're right that that yeah you do need to to sort of take that moment to to really appreciate um yeah, yeah. where you are and 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 what you're doing which is yeah, yeah. So i think it also gives you perspective too when you're out there and you're shooting mm. and you're trying to find that different shot that the six mm. other photographers standing on your corner are getting um, mm. you know you watch a few cars go past watch how they move watch how they react and and go get it mm. yeah yeah oh that's that's definitely right i mean a lot of the time when i'm at the racing and you, yeah you're, you're very right in saying you know as a professional you know you're, you're there to do a job but i think the power of observa observation in photography is crucial um so mm. often when i'll get to a racetrack um you know it might be the first race or something like that I'll spend a lap or two sometimes just watching and seeing the behavior of the drivers um, to seeing how they're reacting with conditions as well. Because if it's a bit slippery, mm -hmm. you know, you look for where they're kind of making those movements, you know, the, the rear mm -hmm. end of the cars are, you know, coming out a little bit. So you mm -hmm. kind of, yeah, it's really important to look because, yeah, sometimes when you're looking through the lens, you just miss, you kind of close off that kind of that peripheral vision to see what's around. Yeah. Speaking of closing, closing off the peripheral vision, have you had any close calls with, um, you know, accidents or cars sort of coming towards you and, and you know, do you run or yes. do you keep shooting or, or what, what yes. how, do, how do you behave in that, that uh, situation? Uh, I've had a couple of experiences. My first one actually was at Silson Classic 2014. So that was the year I arrived. That was probably two or three months after I'd arrived uh, in the UK. And uh, I was at Silstone on the Grand Prix track um, just opposite the wing and I was uh, walking up to one of the grandstands and uh, it was the Formula One cars going around, the historic Formula One cars with the, the DFV V8s, very, very fast, very, very loud. Um, and then, yeah, I started hearing the grid go past and then all of a sudden all this dirt and uh, pieces of suspension flew up in the air on the other side of this wall that I was walking along. And the wall wasn't very high. It was probably a meter, uh, two meters, maybe. So it was just taller than me. So all these bits flew over. And then I jumped up on this ledge and looked over. And uh, this car had spearheaded into the wall right next to me. Um, <laughs> because one of the, I watched uh, the video after one of the suspension components had broken. So it was, it was oh. doing, uh, uh, it was straight lining. And then all yeah. of a sudden, it, you know, those videos where it just goes straight into the wall. Bang. And it had done that. And I was like, if I'd been on that ledge shooting, I would have been in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, that was the first one. But uh, yeah. what wasn't great was the guy didn't look in good shape. Thankfully, he was absolutely uh, fine. Well, mm, not absolutely. Yeah. He broke a few bones, but he was yeah. okay. But it, it was really woke me up to this is dangerous, uh, yeah. and you really have to be alert. Um, yeah. Another place was Le Mans. Actually, the first place was Le Mans um, in pit lane. It's so busy. I can't stress how busy it is when. Wow. when cars are coming in for pit stops it's nuts and that was during hybrid area as well so sometimes with the toyotas you couldn't even hear them come in because they come in on electric power <laughs> so sometimes you see you know um photographers and video people getting pulled out of the way because the car's about to leave um then and one they, of the they need like the jetsons noise like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it that's it, that's it. <laughs> yeah. 
um this picture here that i took took at lumon um this is one of my favorites that i took that year so this was 2014. um wow. this corvette uh actually really hurt my ears so <laughs> it came in for a pit stop and i thought i thought it was going to be for a long pretty long pit stop but it, it was quite quick i'd taken my um earplugs out momentarily i don't know i don't even remember why i did it but i took them out and he switched the ignition back on just as i took them out and honestly my left ear has never been the same uh, it was so <laughs> but since then i've been really really big on making sure you have ear protection for yeah. when you're when you're out on track you have to otherwise yeah. you know, yeah long term could be could be danger <laughs> yeah yeah. So what does I mean? We've had this this question, and and uh, by the way, I just get interrupt. If if anyone does yeah, want to ask any questions, pop them in the um in the the live chat on uh, on YouTube, and we'll, we'll put them to Jason. But one question, um, Patrick Parisian asked on our Facebook page, and I'm I'm sure a lot of people out there would want to know, what does your your kit bag consist of at the moment? What what do you take to a track? Kit bag always consists of two bodies. So I've got a Nikon. So I shoot Nikon. Don't judge me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I've got a D750, which it's not mm -hmm. a pro camera, but what I mm -hmm. like is it's light. Uh, I've got yeah. the D4, which is a pro camera. Uh, it shoots, you know, high shutter frames and yeah, it's very, very quick. But the D750 I found is just a bit more nimble and it's it has that extra megapixels as well for those um, kind of moments that I'm up close. And uh, again, when we were talking about cropping, it allows for a little bit of crop. Um, the D4 is good for safety really um it's whenever i point that uh, that body at anything it works and you know the shot's going to come out whereas to be honest the d750 i do feel like it misses every now and then but it's more for kind of up close not so much action um i also use a 2470 uh which is on one of the bodies all the time uh, 70 to 200, which is usually on the body all the time. And then when I'm at track, uh, 200 to 500 Nikon. So that is an alternative to a 400 fix or a 600. Uh, and the reason being, I've rented a few 400s, a few 600s. I don't think it suits my style of shooting because I'm quite spontaneous. And uh, when I was talking about kind of looking, I will see something and I'll pick up the lens and I'll shoot it straight away. Whereas I felt that the 400 and the 600 were a bit too bulky to allow me to to move and reposition quick enough so the 200 500 i kind of i i hand hold that without a, without a monopod or anything so it's just that flexibility that's really important to me yeah do, do you look like that guy with that sigma holding it up like the cat oh god yeah yeah no the 200 500 is actually quite small in comparison yeah. to mm. the 400 so mm. yeah yeah it's it's interesting what what you say i mean i, I know there's a there's Obviously, we'll, we'll get your opinion on this too. But you know that the Leica revolution going going on at the moment with everyone shooting these you know crazily expensive Leicas, but they're actually you know that's taking I guess your point to, to the other extreme. But there is a lot to be said for portability and and for mm -hmm. having something that you can use all of the time and you don't need to keep spending your time swapping lenses and getting the right X Y Z. You just kind of it's there. You, you know you shoot so. Yeah, no, that's that's quite interesting. So you're not into the prime lenses at all, because I know a lot of people these days are sort of obsessed, myself yeah. included, obsessed with you know really, really fast primes. Um, yeah, yeah. I I like the idea of them. The problem again, it, it just doesn't suit my style. I don't think it's because I like the flexibility of being able to change that focal length and change that frame very quickly. Some people would say that's lazy, but for me. Uh, it's just about the speed um, good, and being efficient. Um, if I was to shoot for myself, I might use a prime more often just because I have the time and the ability to, you know, frame something slowly. But every time I'm on shoot, we never have time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a general rule. It's like, oh, we've got plenty of time. No, we don't. We really don't. Yeah. <laughs> You're always rushed. Yeah. And especially in motorsport, you, I mean, it's, yeah, it is the difference between sometimes getting the shot and not. So I always think back to, you know, film days when they didn't have 48, 50 megapixels to, to use. Mm. They still came out with really beautiful pictures. And for me, that's the most important thing is image quality is super important. But I think the composition and what the subject is, is more important than the image quality. So... Mm. 
for example, the picture that um, I've got here, the, the Corvette, that was actually shot on my D90. Yeah, <laughs> in wow. 2014. So, yeah. um, again, it's not about the gear helps, definitely helps you get the job done faster, more efficiently, certainly. Mm -hmm. But it's not the be all, end all. Um, you can yeah. get away with doing really, really good work with what you've got. And that's the most yeah. important thing. It's yeah. that, that's the age old question, isn't it? Is yeah. equipment going to make me a better photographer? No, definitely not. not. It just, uh, definitely not. But yeah, it'll it's, just make things. It'll just make things easier. <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, we've we've spoken, and I'm I'm sure we all know people that fit into into either category. But I definitely know photographers that are are kind of primarily gearheads in a sense that mm -hmm. that they love the, the gear and the equipment, and and they love knowing everything that it can do, and they can do this and they can do that. And it's almost like taking the photo is sort of secondary to having an understanding of the gear, much yeah. as someone might be into a hi-fi and have a record player and, and you know and just love that that equipment and. Then then you get the guys that that really don't care about the gear whatsoever <laughs> and girls you know and are all about the photo and capturing the moment and, and it sort of sounds like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah to be honest yeah it is for me it's all about what's going to be the best tool or mm. what do i have available you know yeah yeah I, it's important to know the fundamentals of what your camera can do of course but uh yeah as long as for me as long as it can you know make those images for me and it's yeah, it's that's the most important thing. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So when when you're on those those shoots, you know, you've been doing a bit, quite a bit of work for Toyota recently. You mentioned you were sort of supposed to be in Spain at the moment. H how do you cope with the, the pressure? I guess of, um, you know, when you've got, uh, as I said, a limited number of time. There's there's a lot of investment. You know, the client has flown yourself and and a car and drivers and, and a crew out to a location. You, you have you know you've got your good light and is it up to you to kind of decide you know what you need create the shot list and or are you working as a team with the client and, and everyone uh, definitely there? definitely working as a team so there's a production crew and then there's a client as well um yeah so yeah it's, it's a bit of a it's a mixed bag i suppose we we do have a shot list that i'm given um but often i will shoot extra on top just because i shoot it for me as well and i always want the best images just for my own peace of mind as well as well as for the client and usually we we both end up really really happy. So yeah, it's yep. it's a different world that's for sure from what I was doing with motorsport. And I I think the direction was always to head towards a more commercial um, kind of direction mm -hmm. for the future. But shooting kind of motorsport versus commercially like that yeah, is very very different. And there's a lot of responsibility that uh, it's really exciting, but it's kind of like oh there's a bit of pressure. <laughs> Whereas <laughs> With motorsport, yeah, you can kind of get away with just, you know, doing your own thing and, you know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not being more creative, I suppose. Uh, it's, yeah, it's hard. It's yeah. sometimes it's, there's a balance that you can be creative, but almost too creative for a, yeah. for a commercial purpose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, in interesting. So, yeah, I was going to say, so when Andrew, you're... Can you can you turn your mic down just a tad? I can do that. So, you sorry. carry on. Now. Now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all good. All good. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, might have lost him again. Oh, yeah, lost him again. <laughs> ah, so good. Yeah. Yeah, you'll pop back in a sec. Sweet. So in doing commercial stuff, has there been like a photo that's really stuck out as like one of your favorites that you've done? Uh, commercially, uh, you know what? Commercially, I'm not sure. I think, yeah, the, the Shido stuff comes out nice as well. Um, but yeah. actually, you know what? The GR Yaris was fun. So this is, this is it. Um, this was on the, the rally that I was talking about earlier. Um, yeah, so that was a zero car? That was the zero car. Yeah, cool. um, and we had no time to shoot this car at all, really. Um, <laughs> they, the, 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 the brief was to get pictures of the GI Yaris in its environment. Um, but because of the nature of rally, we couldn't really plan to do any shots uh, per se. So we managed to get it just before it went on stage to open up the second or third day of, of, the, of, the, of the rally and uh, got about 10 minutes with it. So I was with um, an assistant of mine who was really, really nice. Uh, he's Swedish. And uh, we, within 10 minutes, we, we managed to rattle off about 
five or six different angles of the car, three quarter, front, rear, rear three quarter, just to kind of get everything in the bag <laughs> because uh, we weren't sure if we'd ever have an opportunity to shoot it again. So sometimes you just have to be so, so quick. Um, mm. But yeah, it really sticks out for me because it was just such a, a nice kind of experience and it really pushed me in terms of what can you achieve in a short amount of time, but still have it commercial as well. So yeah, yeah. it's quite fun. Do you, do you, like with those commercial shoots, do you ever, I, I know when you shoot, for like yourself you know you know where that mm. where those photos end up usually hopefully you're getting tagged in something or you know you're putting your own instagram or website or something like that but with these commercial shoots do you ever get material from anyone or or do you get like get to see where it actually ends up like on a billboard uh, down the street somewhere yeah, yeah, or have you had anything like that before one of my first jobs one of my first big jobs that kind of told me that it was a sign of like oh you could probably make a career of this hopefully <laughs> was uh, back in 20 well, 2011 or 2012 so i spent a lot of time um doing uh car meets and shooting at drift events and stuff like that back in the day um but i shot this uh focus rs uh it was in some i think it was in a shopping center car park and we just were having a bit of fun we just you know night out to, to get some pictures and i was approached by just car insurance um, to use the picture for their their website and for advertising. So this was actually one of my first wow. big jobs, I suppose. So this was used all across some um, TV commercials mm. and on their billboards as well. So I think they're in Sydney. I never actually got to see one on a billboard, but I did see the uh, TV commercial, which had this picture all over it. That's so it was weird. really cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's cool. Um, are they yeah. still around? No, just kind of insurance are dead, I think. Yeah, because they were the are ones cool. like, yeah, they were the ones who would like insure anyone yeah, literally. <laughs> for a money. Yeah, that's probably why they're gone. <laughs> but it was it was cool. I mean, yeah, it was it was a really nice experience to to kind of to kind of get a job like that. And uh, since then, I've done stuff with with Goodwood, and so yeah, uh, Goodwood's played a big part uh, yeah. with my career. So this was shot yeah. in twenty sixteen. This is the one that I remember seeing when I was in awe yeah. of you like fanboy yeah. moment with jason <laughs> from here like oh, look at that. That's uh, thank you mate <laughs> yeah so this picture oh. uh, yep. and there's so. andrew audio oh. Oh. <laughs> i'm not quite sure what's uh yeah don't don't let me interrupt jason no. oh that's all right no, that's yeah okay. andrew your your video is still out just so you know so if you could um try and sort that out sorry uh yeah continue jason sorry so it's 2016 yeah, no. Yeah, this was 2016. So I got. So this was this was Festival of Speed, right? Not Festival of Speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not revival. Um, not revival. Uh, I was briefed that year to take pictures, try to get hero shots of kind of what the festival was about. And Hello. Hello. You are good. You are good. Yeah, I'm good. Come back on. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no problems. Um, so I went out to the to the top of the hill, uh, where the cars finished their run, and I thought, by some chance, hopefully they'll do a burnout because I'd watched from previous years that often they'll go up there and after the run they'll you know tear up the tires. So I went up there after Nico Rosberg's run. And thankfully, yeah, I, I saw an angle that I was pretty happy with. And I was like, that would be, if I was a driver, I'd do a burnout there. Um, and I crouched down and he came around and he just lit the tires up and he hit a patch of grass as well, which you can see in the background, which um, yeah, threw up all this up. kind of texture. Yeah. Um, the so, wet yeah. help, I think, like the wet tires for me is like, yeah, helps the composition yeah, yeah. and everything. Exactly. And well, you can tell it's a tire as well, I suppose, kind of yeah. that little a little link to a road car it's like oh yeah that's that's not just a slick <laughs> you know <laughs> but uh yeah now that's one of my favorite shots i remember taking the frame and, and going you know what i've got to go and edit that so i went straight back down to the media center and edited that picture and i was really really pleased so yeah 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 that's amazing right. uh, what, what did that get used in because i remember that was in was that like a poster is that like a cover for yeah, something that um was used as the headline image for the campaign uh for the actually it was used for two years in a row um, it was used for um, all the material for 
the maps and you know the visitors kind of um, merchandise and stuff like that mm -hmm. uh, it was used on um, the motorways for the billboards it was used throughout london yeah. on i think some tube stations and some bus stops so yeah it was really really cool and magazines of course as well so yeah it got around for for two years <laughs> but yeah still, <laughs> still one of my favorite shots jason that's Welcome That's back. An incredible shot. <laughs> hey, yeah. again, I'm there not sure are. what's going on my end. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> would say it. Would say it's a country problem, but uh, I think Jason's fine. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So, so for those that that have never done, what? Just tell us a bit about shooting at Goodwood because having media accreditation mm. for Goodwood events is something quite special. It's it's quite unlike anything else, especially I mm. found revival and members meeting. But yeah, mm. what what's it like? Tell us tell us a bit about about you know being at goodwood uh goodwood is just a very special place really um yeah like i said at the beginning it was one of the first places that i was like you know what this is this is completely different and it really kind of encompasses everything that i love about motorsport and the old cars and new cars as well um but uh yeah shooting there with a tabard and with accreditation I do feel very lucky mm. and I pinch myself a lot of the time. So I remember getting to the, the Fest of Speed in 2014. Uh, oh, picture. In 2014, um, I was really, really lucky to get a ticket through <laughs> a mutual friend who knew someone who was working at as one of the sponsors and they got me a ticket into the festival. And I spent you know the weekend taking pictures. I was blown out of my mind. I was like, this is amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, and then uh, within, I said, I'd always want to work with Goodwood officially one day. That was always a dream. And then in mm -hmm. 2016, I was approached by the uh, photography team uh, to, to help document their events. And so, yeah, the first event was actually the members meeting in 2015. And yeah. at the time, I believe uh, accreditation for that event was invite only. So I had mm. uh, no chance the year before, but luckily I got some i had some friends who were racing and they managed to get me a pass in i took some pictures and then i had a few magazines contact me to say hey could we use some pictures because i think i was quite different style to the people who had been accredited to be there um and then that kicked off a lot of work for those magazines and a lot more for goodwood as well so yeah i've been been working with goodwood for quite a few years now um helping them to with their team to to help to bring the the event to life and document what actually goes on yeah he's a bit of a controversial one which on. event is best like in your eyes which event <laughs> out of the three is the best one? revival revival <laughs> straight away yeah, yeah. revival revival is the one for me anyway yeah. if you were mm. to pick yeah one only for something that's going to give you an experience you're going to see yeah. racing and you're going to kind of yeah mainly for the experience i think the festival is great but it is for me, it's it's a big car show, and you could probably get a similar feeling elsewhere, you know. But the mm. revival, the whole dressing up thing, honestly, it's <laughs> yeah, it's another thing altogether. You have to dress up. You, you have you to. Have, <laughs> if you go, yeah. if you go in jeans and a t-shirt. You literally feel out of place. <laughs> well, do you get yeah. kicked out? Are you allowed yeah. entry if you just go jeans and a t-shirt? I think you, it's, you know, it's frowned upon. <laughs> it's very much frowned. On, yes <laughs> i think i think you wouldn't you wouldn't get i mean if you had a pass to do it i don't think you'd get into the paddock in the pit area dressed in in normal clothes i think no, they do have yes, a dress code for that room. yeah yes, yeah definitely. um yeah. but yeah. how uh, many outfits do you have <laughs> uh to be honest i mean a guy can always get away with a tweed coat and just yeah. whatever yeah. Shirt yeah. just change the shirt or the tie and you're fine <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that's me <laughs> yeah yeah but I'd never ever, no, Jay, I'd never ever thought that I'd own a tweed outfit. But uh, I bought one, and I was like, "Actually, this ain't bad." <laughs> yeah. I remember my, my first revival a few a few years ago there, um, when I was lucky enough to have my first accreditation there, and I was, you know, the weekend before rummaging through uh, charity shops trying to find just something old that I could throw on it. And I just sort of thought, this is unlike any preparation for any motorsport event I've ever done before. Like trying to find the right outfit was you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. more was harder than getting the the camera gear ready and <laughs> and all of that. And, and when you actually turn up to the to the press tent, you're like, there's typewriters everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, it's decked out like a, a World War Two kind of um, tent. Yeah, with, uh, with typewriters and everything everywhere. It's great. Guess, <laughs> yeah, like, everything's done by it. a runner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess it's one yeah. of those, but, it, but it's just that level of detail, isn't it, Andrew? Like, yeah. like the level of detail they go to there yeah. is just 
whole yeah. nother world. I mean, I'm I'm probably going to say it behind me, I mean, just as an example that you can probably see just up there is a press pass, um, you know, that the armband. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, down to the fact that even your your press accreditation is is a period correct press accreditation. There's no, you know, wristbands or, or anything like that that and yeah the level of de the depth of detail i think for me was when i went into the media center at revival and as jason said they, they've dressed the media center exactly the same as the rest of the circuit um and yeah there's there's typewriters there's there's flags it's in a, a sort of a safari style you know desert tent and it's um all of the media staff are wearing you know appropriate costumes yeah, and yeah. they you know the the actors they have they have actors there to, to walk around and mm. set the, the tone and the actors are at the front of the media center <laughs> you know and it, it's it's yeah it's, um, mm. it's a very special experience yeah, yeah. but i i do have a gripe that press band in the background <laughs> they annoy me so much because they always yes. take off <laughs> and when when because they're made of paper and string <laughs> everything goes wrong <laughs> so, so you'd have one of those annoying fluoro stick on yeah, like probably. music festival bands in <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. well i guess that's old yeah. worldy thing oh, there's probably like a good little segue into jason's art i guess isn't it and in delving into that yeah. a little bit more i mean andrew and i i think it was like our the way we met you was commissioning some work to be done right andrew yeah that was yeah, that is yeah. True. The, um, for the collective magazine, Luke, do you I've got one just uh, here, actually. Yeah, I've got one too. So, yeah, that was uh, your little... Jason did this. Yeah. Jason yeah. did that. We can all... <laughs> hey, Andrew, amazing. you hold it. I'll, uh, you can be the model. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was, that was a, a magazine that Andrew and I helped put together um, for, the pet, for, the, for the car clubs that were attending the Petrolicious Car Meet at... Mm. Uh, mm. Drivers meet. Drivers meet. Mm. Um, and and then, uh, Jason did uh, some yeah, remember, yeah. side profiles <laughs> and everything. And we, that was really cool. We capped. Jason, I still have. I managed to. Um, so, so what we did is we we had uh, we had how many did we have? Eight cars on display, and we had Jason obviously do that the cover art, but then Jason also did these little side profile sketches for us um, that went along with each uh, each story. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so for cool. those. Those that, that are listening, audio only, that the little sort of, you know, quick, quick sort of oil, um, sorry, watercolour side profiles, which are of each car. And um, and then we gave the originals to the car owners. But I, I luckily managed to, to hold on to the Volvo, the P1800. So I have that hanging <laughs> on my wall. <laughs> so I hope you're, it's, yeah. uh, it's very cool. Well, all, so, yeah. I've managed, of course, I got a copy as well. But <laughs> I, 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 these are the original sketches. Oh, cool! Yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> I remember getting those on yeah. on like message from Andrew of like concepty mm. stuff because we we yeah. kind of spoken about what we wanted and you know as a creative person you know being doing that process is always very different to handing it off to somebody else and letting them with yeah, their yeah. process and it's it's good to see how they work. And when I saw those first sketches, I was like, oh, he gets it. He does it. Like <laughs> it's it's exactly yeah. what we wanted and exactly yeah. how how I think Andrew had it in his head like you know, how right, everything yeah. was going to be signed out. And, I mean, credit to you, I don't think we gave you much time to do it either. Andrew, uh, was all uh, short like I, said, stuff. I never have time to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think that's that, you know, in, in relation to this, but I, I think a lot of these projects, and Jason, you, you've probably experienced this with your photography probably more than, than the artwork, but when you're working on these projects with other people and there's there's other forces in play, sometimes it just doesn't go the way you want it to and, and you don't have time yeah. and things happen and suddenly you get green lights later than, than you would like yeah. them and, and you just kind of yeah. make it happen. And I, I assume you, you get the, the 11 story, and PM phone story calls. Of, story Can of my you? life and everyone's <laughs> life, really. I mean, the thing is, if, if yeah. you don't have a deadline, nothing's ever going to get done. That's the thing. <laughs> it becomes very difficult. So sometimes having a deadline is, is a good thing. And actually, mm. I feel like in terms of art, uh, the, the, the method in which you use to create it uh, you know, if it is a rushed piece or if it's uh, a piece that is has that layer of kind of, I don't know, hand-drawn nature to it, it, it feels genuine because it also reflects the time in which it was made. <laughs> yeah, so it's the uh, 24, the 24? Yeah. 24, 24 for 24. 24. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you, yeah, yeah introduce, us, introduce the project. All right, I'll bring that up. Yeah. Well, that was, that's one of my favourite yeah. series from you because, uh, like, you know, being in Australia, we have a, a really weird, you know, point of time it's middle of the night stuff to watch most of it so 
uh yeah. watching you do that stuff while i'm watching the race is just yeah, it's awesome it's so cool. Yeah, cool i'm glad <laughs> so, to hear it so the idea actually came about because i went to le mans when i first arrived yeah in the uk in 2014 and then i said to myself you know this is so amazing i'm gonna go every year after this you know, no <laughs> doubt 100 percent. you know that's the promise to me the next year i can go so i was like okay well i need to watch the race at least and then I, th I think I did a drawing the night before and I thought, actually, could I do, you know, drawings throughout the race? And uh, yeah, it, it came about that I thought, you know, maybe I'll try and do 24 artworks in 24 hours. So Which must initially be brutal. That, <laughs> like, it, was, brutal. it was pretty brutal. And, you know, the, the biggest mistake I made that year was I forgot the race starts at three or four o'clock in the afternoon. I woke up at like <laughs> seven o'clock in the morning and I was like, oh man, this is not going to be good. <laughs> so like, it goes it down like to the 40, store, buy like 48, the Red Bull. 36, yeah, yeah, 36 or 40 hours awake. And I was just like, oh no, this is a terrible idea. Um, but, yeah, but you like, committed. Out, like, I, I stuck with it for, I think, four or five years now. I think last year was five years. Um, yeah. Wrigley Monkey. And uh, my uh, my moral support was uh, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> that was good fun. Yeah, yeah. I uh, was we good. uh, did you yeah, rope so, him into so that one, had... Andrew? Did you rope Jason well, we, into coming I down and know, know, sitting in a rainy yeah. tent? It was a rainy tent, yeah. wasn't it? I'd like, yeah. to, I'd like to say it was the result of a, of a conversation, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. yeah I, I did feel terrible because you know we, we were talking, you know, and we had the idea. We're like, well, if Jason could do this live in, in front, and you know, a client of mine, the Wrigley Monkey Brewery, were having an event, you know, a sort of a pub night where they were have, screening the, the race and having a bunch of people there for a bit of a party, and we thought, well, if Jason's there doing this live in front of a live audience like that would just add another element to it and yeah that the biggest most biblical rainstorm we've ever seen came through about oh, half yeah. an hour after the race started <laughs> <laughs> and we're all running well around going paper, right? Right? <laughs> sorry that goes well with paper and art yeah and yeah well art, right? we yeah. did say we did say it was going to be watercolor art so. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, yeah poor Jake, i think at one point a drain blocked and there's you know rising oh, water man. coming up below yeah yeah. That was, yeah yeah for anyone listening out there if you jump on my instagram there's a little highlight with the last year's kind of shenanigans and yeah you can see all that water rising out it's it was unforgettable <laughs> just like this yeah. <laughs> These were not the conditions I signed up for, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Should have had that in the contract. Acts of God yeah, yeah. renders this contract null and void. I'm out. Yeah. But it, it definitely. What can added, we say it's an English yeah, summer? Yeah. <laughs> it definitely added yeah. another element to it because usually I'm doing those artworks from the comfort of home at my desk. Um, you know, I've, I've got my my supplies in the fridge and it's all good. Uh, <laughs> when I was the Wrigley Monkey, yeah, I was just like, hey, it's. It's kind of cold it's raining i'm outside <laughs> <laughs> my paper's blowing away <laughs> this is weird <laughs> it's um what, what do you but, what do you do with the pictures uh i actually i sell them uh right. the originals do get sold so every year i um sell the originals for uh, about 100 quid and uh 25 percent always goes to a charity that i pick for the year so yeah mm. yeah but uh, and, I always scan yeah, them in. They are. I've been, I've been, I've been really bad because I always say that I'm scan them in. I'll make a book, but I've never done a book, so it's coming. <laughs> I'll do a book. I'll do a book for every year, and then hopefully they'll be for sale at some point as well. Yeah, cool. fantastic. I'd buy one because I think that the thing that impressed me uh, at this is is they're not quick sketches. Like 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 these these pictures are taking Jason. I remember there was a time when, you know, they're taking up to more than an hour to do. So so there was a backlog of, of them coming <laughs> coming along, you know, because obviously 24 pictures, 24 hours, you know, one an hour. And some of them were getting really complex and really beautiful <laughs> and we're taking time. These are not just sort of, you know, quick 20 minute done. They're they're proper um proper paintings. They're they're very yeah. detailed. Um well like even that on the just on the picture here for those who are watching on YouTube, you can see um, mm. like just the detail on the livery on that Porsche too. Like, you know, <laughs> it's going to take you a little while to get right. <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah. doing that one. I was just like, uh, I think it was like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. So about 4 or 5, yeah, about that that kind of early morning period, it always gets a little bit weird because I'm like, <laughs> yeah. is anyone even watching? Why am I even doing this? <laughs> <laughs> um, but so I kind of just have a bit of fun. Uh, but yeah, like Andrew says, some some of them actually take longer than an hour. The goal is to do it within the hour, um, but sometimes it just doesn't work. 
work out. Um, but we always end up with 24 in the end. Uh, but yeah, yeah, sometimes, yeah, two or three o'clock in the morning, if I've got two or three to go, some one of them will be really, really quick if I can be, but then the others mm. can take a bit longer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I definitely remember that two or three o'clock because I, I went into that, you know, as the support thinking I'm going to stay up with Jason. We're going to, we're going to do this together. We're in it together. And then it got to about, <laughs> yeah, it got to about 2.33. Two, I'm like, I just, I need a nap. I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, the other thing that really kind of like stressed me out that about last year was, yeah, okay, that water was, was really stressful because, that first hour is always difficult as is because I'm like, I've got to warm up. I've got to kind of get back into the rhythm of doing yeah. these artworks. Yeah. And then when that water started coming, I was like, I'm already behind two hours. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, that created the backlog. So, yeah, it is. I guess, I guess it's a bit of a race as well. So it's good fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, that's, yeah. um, Did they all sell? Uh, last year's was really good. I think we saw, I sold 21 of them. I think I only have three left. Um, what have you got I'm left? Do you, want to, do you want to plug them now? What do you got left? I'm not sure. Or, uh, or is it just visit your store? It's, yeah, visit my store. It's on my website under 2019. But yeah, there's only three left, I think. But yeah, thankfully, most of them sold. I think we made quite a bit of money for um uh, for the charity as well. So that was really, really Mission yeah. Motorsport. And Mission Motorsport, good. yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Well, that's so, been happening with guess, your ISO uh, photos too, isn't it? Your ISO sorry. sketches. Your ISO sketches yes. you've been doing at the moment. Yes, well. Like, where's that money going? going for that? Um, that will go to the NHS uh, for just for to fight the, the coronavirus. So um, I've yet to put mm -hmm. them up on the store, but that's the plan as well. And they'll they'll sell. They'll all be different because some of them are taking longer. So depending on mm -hmm. pricing, will depend. But uh, yeah, twenty five percent will go to the NHS as well. Fantastic. So yeah. I guess we, we might as well get to some questions that, that mm. we've had asked. Um, so first question from Codename James. There's a picture that uh, we popped up on Instagram of a Mustang, um, which uh, has its yeah. beautiful glowing brake rotor, and it looks like something's under the car. There's sparks coming off it. It's, it's a brilliant yep. shot. I don't know if you, you're able to bring it up for us. What uh, what What is falling I, off I, the car? Jace, you, you, you yeah, answer yeah, all that. Okay. Uh, Okay. Oh, um, that is yeah. the exhaust. You are correct. That car mm -hmm. was driving, and um, yeah, came around maybe three or four laps, and it was sparking everywhere. And I was like, I've got to get a picture <laughs> of those sparks everywhere. I managed to get it on the second lap, I think. But uh, yeah, I, I I spoke to the owner afterwards. Yeah, it was the exhaust. I think it fell off the hanger or something like that, and they were dragging it along for three or four laps until the next pit. <laughs> Wow, and, yeah, and that was a spa, was it? Where, where was that? That was, a spa. that was for the six hour. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was in twenty fourteen or fifteen as well. Um, yeah, but uh, thankfully that um, that that picture actually won me the motorsport photographer of the year, uh, young motorsport photographer of the year award for the UK that year. So yeah, I was really really happy with that. Wow, one. yeah, that is, that's, that's up there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, and, it's, it's, and I so, guess yeah, actually I speaking of that, awards. <laughs> I was going to say, speaking of awards, we noticed your uh, yeah. What what else have you won recently? I, I saw a photo of you in a in a in a tuxedo receiving yeah, an award so, the other a few months ago. So, so <laughs> last year, last year was quite good. Um, managed to scoop up two, so I won the news press award, which was for more yep. kind of um, press packs and kind of for manufacturers uh, and a bit of editorial as well. Um, but I also won the Guild of Motoring Riders um, Motorsport Photographer of the Year as well. So managed to. Yeah, get to, invited to the awards dinner and uh, dress up in a penguin suit and uh, get a picture with uh, some Jackie. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Fantastic. Um, I don't, yeah. I don't know much about those awards, and I'm, you know, never probably in my life going to be anywhere near getting one of those awards. So, like, what's the never process? Never, that? Like, do, do yeah, never say never. Never say do you, never. Do you um <laughs> do you have to put forward an application for that, or like, do you do you, someone nominate you, or like, how does it work? Uh, some awards are nomination, um, but for those ones in particular, uh, yeah, you put yourself forward and you put together a portfolio. So more often than not, it's about three to six photos that you put together. Um, depend depending on the competition, sometimes they require them to be published works, and you have to give evidence as well to go with that. Um, or other times, it's give us three great photos from that year, and we'll just see who's got the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah very, all very yeah. subjective. So who yeah. knows? <laughs> Yeah. 
So I guess we've got another question, and this is this is one that is probably a uh, you know quite a topical a topical question, a, a two part question. I guess we can chat from. I'm not sure if you know Jaden Jaden Oswald. I think he's from from Sydney, a great photographer that, that I've followed on Instagram for a long time. Um, yeah, popped us a question that he he was actually planning on moving to London later this year, <laughs> um, which obviously is is probably something that might need to, to wait a little bit. But, um, but yeah, he, he just had a question. Like, so what, you're you're obviously traveling traveling so so often. How how do you handle the the visa situation and the sort of I guess the paperwork side of of yeah constantly bouncing around the the countryside in Europe and and whatnot? Uh, visa situation is fine um, because you're moving around within most of the time. For me, I'm moving within the Schengen area, and since we're still part of the EU. Technically, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> subject. Um, it's, it's fine uh, because I get paid in pounds, so it makes no difference. It's you, you just yeah. get for a job, so it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. In terms of staying long term, though, I mean that's probably a question that that's for you as well, Andrew. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because staying yeah. long term in the UK can be a bit tricky. Yeah, because uh, thankfully yeah. I'm with my partner, so we're on a on a on a visa on a partner visa but otherwise it, it actually can be quite difficult especially yeah. as self -employed. i i think mm. the 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 rule as it stands at the moment is if you're australian new zealand canadian i think there's a couple of other nationalities there's um what they call a, a youth mobility visa so if you're under 30 uh you get two years in the uk um no questions asked that you can come and come and do what you want and that's that's what I've what I started on, um, but yeah, Jason. Jason's right that after that two years to extend, it is a bit of a tricky one. I'm also lucky that my partner has a British passport too, so um, <laughs> you know that's that's how I've been able to to stay. Um, but yeah, it, it's if if basically if if you have an English ancestry, uh, it's definitely doable. I, I definitely know some people that have you know a grandparent or, or a cousin or an uncle, and they've been able to go down the ancestry route. Um, definitely finding a, a partner with a, with a British passport is is another way of doing it. Um, otherwise, I, I think. <laughs> Hey, depends, depends how committed you are to your art. <laughs> um, I think, I think you know, Jason. Maybe you might have some comments on this. I, I, it's it's very tricky. I think there is also a sponsored route you can go down if if you find a um, a particular company or organisation that will sponsor you to stay. You can go down there, but I think that is quite costly. I mean, even even the um, you know the, the the partner visa is quite a costly option too. It's it's certainly not not something you do lightly it's it's something you do because you really want to do it um and have the experience it, it's it is a bit of a, a, a bit of a laborious process to go through yeah. I've, I've certainly found that so yeah yeah definitely um yeah you're, you're completely right there is a i found that there were three methods after that two-year um youth mobility visa there was either partner route which thankfully i was together with my partner beforehand so we qualified for that uh, the sponsorship yeah. route yeah, it is difficult because unless you're working in, you know, finance or IT or something where there's big companies that can employ you or even into company transfers from Australia, uh, it can be mm. quite difficult finding a company because they are required by regulation to have a human resources person look after your case as well. And then there's additional fees on top that they need to pay. So trying to find a company that's willing to do that can be quite difficult. Uh, but if you do, yeah. you know, props to you. Um, and then the other one, I think there's, there is an arts one, uh, okay. but I, I'm not sure what, I, well, I definitely didn't qualify, but you need to be someone like doing something amazing. I think it's yeah, arts and science. So if you're a scientist, that's got yeah. like a breakthrough, you know, technology or something, of course, they're going to say, Hey, come over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 But, uh, I... yeah, it can be quite difficult. I, I think from from what I've read, and obviously this is this is all up in the air. No, nobody knows what's happening. I think post Brexit, um, from what I understand, it's probably, if anything, going to get easier, not harder for Australians and Canadians and whatnot to come to the UK to, to work. I think because um, obviously the EU rules won't be there, and I think the government will be wanting to encourage as many people yeah. to come and sort of invest as possible. So, so you know watch this space in a couple of months time it will change and i would be surprised if it gets harder um I, i'd say it would get easier um yeah. but obviously that's nobody knows that that's purely <laughs> purely speculation but yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah so you have any i don't know or is that it 
Oh, that's that's what I've got. Uh, unless anyone's popped any on the um on the chat. Uh, on. Yeah, did you have any, Jason? I'll, I'll check on Instagram mm. real quick. Yeah, um, we'll do that. Actually, we we also need to briefly. Obviously, Jason's uh, recently now jumping behind the wheel instead of taking photos of other people having fun. So we need to to touch we'll on talk that about that quickly. Oh, I'll, yeah, I'll, 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 we but we'll see. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'm yeah. just having a browse on Jason's store now. There's still a few 24 for 20. For LM24 Arts up at uh, jasonfong.com, which is pretty cool. Mm. Lots of other good yeah, posters yeah. as well. It's good stuff. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Yeah, yeah I this update, I'm quite slack on it because, yeah, photography has taken over, but I've got the time now, so hopefully. Get on to that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you have any, Jason, or were you? No, no, none, none, no. none here. All good. So bring oh, up a good. photo of your MX5. It's five. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. The big guns. <laughs> which, which, because, because you said at the start, like background of engineering. So this is obviously, you know, quite a, uh, I guess, scientific journey for you in terms of improving well, I, this car and I wish, I tell the story. Engineering. I'm just a designer, so nah. I make. <laughs> Same. I, I design things. I design things <laughs> that people have to try and figure out how to make. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, it has been quite a journey actually because. Um, I never ever really thought an MX-5 would be my kind of car. I've always been into, well, I'll pull up pictures of my old ones. Uh, <laughs> so this is, yeah, my, my first car back in the day, yeah, non-turbo Impreza. And then was I this a P-plater car? It was a P-plater car. Yeah, that's like yeah. the typical, I, I lived in Sydney Can from we... 07 to 09, and yeah, that was yeah. like, P plate oh, central is like RX yeah, yeah. Impreza, mm, yeah, like yeah. off you go. Sometimes yeah. with WRX bonnets, but big and wheels, cannon exhaust. So <laughs> slow. <laughs> so slow. Can I just and can I just also make it embarrassing? It was an auto. <laughs> no oh, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, did you it. not hang on? I thought you said you liked cars. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> how, could, how, I know. how could you do that to yourself? I know. <laughs> Can That's I, why can I, I, I also just make up point. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good, right, good. Redeemed. That wasn't an auto, like... right? Sorry? That wasn't an auto. No, that was a manual. That was a <laughs> final edition. I think that was a 2000 um, model WRX, and it yeah. was in really, really good condition. Um, I actually, you will regret selling that one day. <laughs> uh, probably. I already do. Um, when I went to go buy one, I think... Yeah, I, I, I was really after a car and I test drove a few MX-5s actually back then. I was like, no, not really my kind of thing. I still prefer, you know, a bit, bit uh, you know, a bit of boxer rumble. Um, so I went with the, the Rexy. And uh, when I was on car sales or something, I think I was, the average price was like 6000 Aussie dollars, 7000 yeah. And I saw this one for like thirteen, and I was like, this guy's having a laugh, you know. <laughs> Let's go have a look. What, what's this guy even offering? <laughs> And then I went to the garage uh, where he, he was. It was a private sale. And he opened the, the garage and there was a 1965 short wheelbase 911. And then this. <laughs> <laughs> and both were absolutely perfect. They were so clean. Um, it wasn't actually super low mileage, but it was just really, really great condition throughout. Um, so, yeah, I, I kept that for a while. I actually owned it longer uh, while I was here in the UK than I did in Australia. <laughs> so... <laughs> In reality, I drove it for about eight months, and the rest of the time, my dad did. <laughs> so, dad was pretty happy. Can I, can I just say, your, your first car may have been automatic, but there was a detail I noticed on that, which I think does signal you out as a true motorsport fan. Yep. On the passenger uh, mirror there, there is yeah, the cat, yeah. which people will know from the Petter Solberg Subaru WRC yeah. of the same era, Correct. and I think it's, it is, it is it, forgive it me, is a, it's, it's, it's a pig. It's a, a pig, is it? A pig, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's big from yeah. a, it, I think the sponsor was a Japanese magazine. Uh, yeah. But yeah, little, little details. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So all is not lost. <laughs> yeah. All is not lost. All is not lost. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah. Uh, shift. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So now this is the beast. Um, this is the first car I've had that I've kind of wanted to, to modify and kind of get back into to driving since I moved over here, um, and I really enjoy it. It's, um, it's a hard top MX-5, um, retractable hard top, so it does the full electric thing, um, but it's lowered. Um, nothing done to the engine at the moment. Um, done sway bars, um, bits of cosmetics, but mostly suspension and brakes. Um, at the moment, it's pretty close to what I'd like from it, 
but I'm hoping to take it to BBR, who are a tuner up in Silverstone. I think they developed the first turbo kit for the Mark One MX-5 back in the day, um, but yeah. they've also got a 200 horsepower um, naturally aspirated um, kit for this car, which yeah. upgrades the cams and stuff like that. So I'm hoping the goal is to bring it up to a very similar spec to the to the Cup race cars, um, but also have all the creature comforts of you know the seats and you know yeah. So long road Fantastic. tours, but at least it's pretty quick on on the track. Hopefully, so yeah. Jason, just... Have you have you been to BBR before? Yes, I have. I went for a really really quick visit yeah. um, I think yeah. last year to just have a general chat about what would be involved yeah. and stuff like that. But uh, yeah. I'm I'm really excited it's... for all this to be over and to take it in. Because <laughs> they are. Yeah. B BBR, it's, uh, when I went there for a story, and uh, I was quite surprised that they literally are next door to the AMG Patronus Formula One team um, yeah. in Brackley. So, so you drive off the motorway and you come in, you know, you're following the sat nav, and you come down the road, and there's a roundabout in in the middle, and you're sort of approaching from from a hill, so you're coming down, and so you can see above the roundabout, and it's the Mercedes Benz badge in a hedge the size of a roundabout <laughs> um, and, and i remember popping down going oh that's pretty weird and then you look over to the right and you're like oh that's the formula one team and then yeah. in this sort of far more humble but still pretty cool premises next door is, is bbr and there's mx fires yeah. everywhere and um yeah. and yeah and i remember neil was saying like their, their carbon work some of the shields that the heat shields that they they provide with their kits um are actually made by the same carbon specialist that that supply a lot of the formula one parts and i just remember that that the finish on these parts was just yeah. immaculate just being in the heart because of race car, mate. Because race car. <laughs> because race car. <laughs> yeah that's the goal yeah. that's the goal but yeah it's uh yeah. yeah it's um been fun to get, have a car of my own that i can take around europe and i mean we're so lucky with tracks around here so the first track day was out to the nurburgring last year with a bunch of australian friends um who go out to the yeah. ring quite a lot. They're they're quite addicted, but it's only a good thing. But they've got me hooked as well. So I'm trying to make this car as suitable for the long journey over and then do a couple of laps and then come home as well. So yeah, that's come that's home, not end yeah. up on YouTube crash <laughs> compilations. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that seems like a bit of a had had you done any track work before going to Nürburgring? Like have you done uh, like yes, stuff in Australia or I've done quite a bit of track days, uh, did a couple of advanced driving courses um, over in Australia and uh, not so much over here, but yeah, lots of track days over here since. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but it, Gran Turismo, Gran Turismo. <laughs> it, <honestly. laughs> yeah. In all seriousness, I've been driving, you know, Gran Turismo and Nürburgring since I was like 10. Um, and it gives you such a good idea of what it's going to be like. Mm -hmm. But when you get there, everything changes <laughs> my first my first lap was i think in a 350 or 400 horsepower um nissan 350z mm. and um we were, i think we ended up doing a lap that was just over eight minutes um but it wow. was so fast honestly it was yeah the, the corners just kept coming and it, it didn't really give you me time to kind of digest what was happening and then we went out um again i went so i did about eight passenger laps before i even wanted to venture out in my own car um i went out in another mx5 um and the pace was a lot slower so i could digest the corners i was like oh i get it now you know yeah. i can recognize this yeah and then went in out my car and yeah it was, it was really really good did i think six laps in it that that uh, weekend but yeah it was really really fun yeah <laughs> and what other tracks have you uh have you had the the mx5 out on uh, uh, so far Donington, goodwood and then silverstone so yeah it's just a nice yeah. little collection and i was supposed to do brands hatch <laughs> yeah. at the beginning of this month but that fell through because of the, the virus obviously yeah um, but, uh, so all the small yeah. circuits all the all the little yeah. ones <laughs> all the little yeah ones. So what, what's Goodwood like? Because that surprise strikes me as a track that would be incredible fun, but you are only ever inches away from just complete disaster. Because yeah. <laughs> there's a lot to hit at Goodwood. So the day I went out, it was actually a little bit damp that morning. And it it was cold as well, so it was a winter day. Um, so I went out and it was it's it's a really rewarding track when you get it right um but yeah. the thing is like you said it's it, it can be so so fast um and it's similar uh similar to a circuit like castle coon which is also fantastic mm -hmm. but yeah again mm -hmm. if you make a mistake you're straight into a wall <laughs> which isn't great <laughs> not great at all but 
To be honest, that's, it's not too dissimilar to the Nurburgring, but the Nurburgring's just got a lot more corners. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, uh, all this is in kind of preparation because uh, I actually managed to be offered a seat for the Spa Six Hour in September this year. Really? So I'm supposed, to be, I'm, supposed wow. to be driving, I'm supposed to be driving an MGB um, in September, but uh, at the moment I'm not sure wow. how that's all going to work out. But I was supposed to do yeah. uh, some rounds of the MX5 Championship, not in my car, but in in a in a car from a team up the road. Yeah. Um, hmm. But uh, I think that's yeah. all on hold, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. I need to get yeah. enough points for my license to be able to do international events. So yeah, that's. It was supposed to be a big year, but uh, who knows? <laughs> we'll see. Maybe next <laughs> year. Yeah. yeah. No, fantastic. Yeah. You could just that, you could just do better. watercolors or an oil painting yeah, yeah. of what could have been or something what, like that. What could have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. But yeah, that's good. I think you're yeah. racing. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Well, guys, um, I think that's a that's a show. Do you have anything else? Anyone wants to cover while we're while yeah, we're Jess, here? Yeah, Jess, do you wanna do you wanna do you wanna plug away? What have you got? Where can people find you? Yeah, yeah, no problems. Um, well, I'm trying to push Instagram, so if you're if you're out there, mm-hmm. feel free to to add me on Instagram, Jason Fong, Jason with a Y. So I'm a little bit special. Yeah, um, I did that. I made that mistake. <laughs> I was I was trying to get the episode name. And I was like, Jason. I'm like, I don't think that's right. Oh no, it's a Y. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And yeah, please um, visit my my website as well. So JasonFong.com. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a good store there. I've got my portfolio there. So yeah, any questions? If anyone's got questions after this, feel free to message me anywhere if you want yeah. so yeah yeah okay yeah yeah fantastic cool and um yeah Thanks. obviously jason's available for commissions both photographically yeah. and artistically and um yeah we well, have to do that <laughs> yeah that's it exactly right and, um, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah very cool so, yeah all right well thank you for joining us jason thank um, you guys really appreciate it chat and hear about right. it. i think there's only a, a very small handful of, of people that are doing what you do um it's something that a lot of people you know dream of dream of doing and and make no you know it's not easy i imagine you know it's it's certainly not not an easy walk in the park at all but it's great to to, to hear your success and hear that you've actually made the jump and making a uh, making a, a win of it. i think it's great great story so uh, thank you mate really appreciate it yeah well love what loving what you guys are doing with the magazine as well so it's it's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. All right. All right. Take well, care, guys. We'll, uh, yeah. See you later. Okay. Yeah. We're um, obviously various follows. Luke at Boxer33. I'm at AGR underscore Andrew. Sportscar Safari at Sportscar Safari um, <laughs> across the channels. And magazine you- issue three coming out soon. Yeah, and uh, make sure you uh, best way to figure out about the live stream. We should have it uh, sorted now that we can produce the link prior to the live stream, which is. Mm-hmm. A big savior <laughs> we're not scrambling <laughs> around at the start of the 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 stream to try and get it sorted uh, but the best yeah. way is to just hit subscribe in youtube or apple podcasts or spotify and um get notified when that stuff comes live um yeah. or follow us on instagram and you, you'll see us posting way about it as well but yeah we're planned to be on next thursday as well again um should be doing mm-hmm. a test on monday for our guest which we will announce soon but that will be a cool one as well mm-hmm. so yeah so, Thank all right. You guys. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, guys. We'll see Take you all care. later. Thank you for tuning in. See you later. Bye. Bye.